Hey everyone, good morning. Happy Chinese New Year to everyone. It's me, Yui. We're gonna stream some live coding today again. Let me know video if uh, everything works all right to you. And let's get started. I'm gonna break down some cool website today and then maybe if we have some spare time, I'm gonna do something generative. I'm gonna try to inspire you to draw something in Canvas yourself. See. Morning. All right. Hopefully you can hear me too. So. Recently I saw this website. I think it was just released a couple of days ago. And I thought it's really cool, this hand animation they have here. Ooh, where's he going? So, it's kind of a mini game. Really? Can't hear me? Really? You can't hear me? Does anyone else can't hear me too? You've got no sound. Oh, all right. All right. So that might be your problem. Thank you. I was worried about that. Okay. 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 So, so this website, I thought it's really cool. It's like a lot of 3D objects walking at a different speed through the screen. And it's really lots of them, you know, it's hundreds of them and it works smoothly 60 fps the whole time and the goal of this game you need to look for one hand yeah for this one and then it animates like that it's jumping all around so it's pretty cool in my opinion at least so i thought i would like try to decompile this try to learn myself how to do this kind of animation and i did and that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna do all those walking hands uh, this is kind of tribute in honor for the developers of this website because I think it's really cool and like the technical idea and pff, the design idea they just met each other and married and had a lot of children and lived happily ever after so let's start to do this I'm gonna use 3GS for this I'm gonna call it Walker I'm gonna use my template I'm gonna try to explain it because a lot of people asked me if if I can share it, I don't want to share it because if I will share it, you will try to ask me some questions like how, why or how I did this or that. I'm gonna just explain you the most important parts of this. Uh, I need to create HTML container for my canvas and then something here. I will run it. Walker parcel index HTML, that's enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the stuff I wouldn't even use today. And this is most of the stuff that is here. I'll be using it. So it's just a hundred of lines of code. Let me go through this. First, I have some dependencies, obviously, because I'm using 3.js and JSAP, probably. I will not be using it anyway, but still, I have it installed already. So I have a basic 3.js setup. Like I'm setting up the width, the height, the aspect ratio, the device pixel ratio, the DOM element where I will add like this, just some kind of object that has these properties, width and the height. Uh, I have the camera, it's just the basic setup of the camera. I have it positioned somewhere. I have orbit controls just to rotate things around. I think like half of the 3JS example has it. Um, well, that's it. <laughs> that is actually, it also have some settings just so I can use the dot GUI GUI in case I would like to. It's probably the object for you. What else? have resize functions, which obviously just change the aspect ratio and the width and the height. And then I have stop play and request animation frame, which runs. 
And then there's this function which adds something and just adds shader material and adds plane geometry. So that's it. Hopefully you got the idea. I don't want to go too deep into it because it's quite simple, you know. And there we go. We have this red square, which is the red color we see is coming from the shader. It's coming from the fragment shader from here. I don't even need this, I think. So it's as basic as it could be, I think. All right. <laughs> All right. I will not be worrying about that anymore. Next. What should I do next? Because they have a lot of those um, hands, those walking hands. That means we obviously should use something like instancing because this is the way to go when you have lots of copies of an object in your scene. You, sh you should use instancing. And recently, there was that they, they had some new object or what was that API object into the 3GS. It's called Instant Smash. It's kind of simplifying the way to use instancing. Well, in a way, yeah. So we have in a an example here somewhere. Uh -huh. Link is not working, but it doesn't really matter. There are lots of other examples. So to, to use this instance mesh, we need to use the count, like how many objects we would have in the scene. We need to use geometry, material. Material I already have, it's just a red square. And then I need geometry. And geometry, I think I also have it. It's a plain, 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 plainest, most plain geometry. You could imagine it's just a square one by one. Maybe I could make it a bit smaller. This is the size of my square. Yeah, because I would have lots of them on my screen now. Why are you saying it's obfuscated? It's not obfuscated. The sources are on a GitHub. They're not obfuscated at all. All right. Mm. So we have this plane. Now I need to make lots of those planes on my screen. Let's try to do that. I'm going to just copy paste from a 3JS example here because it's easier. So we have a geometry, instance mesh, we have material. We need to set the count. This count equals 10. Then I'm going to do something in this loop. I think I, I already used this um, technique in my stream about Good Boy. They're creating dummy, dummy the 3JS object. This 3JS object. I'm going to go ahead and create it here. It's just some dummy object which I'm going to use as a dummy to get a matrix from it. Get a transformation matrix from it. And where is it again? So I'm gonna set dummy position and then I need to set the matrix. Dummy position set and they're gonna be my coordinates. I'm gonna use my friend on for now. For X and Y positions of my object. I'm gonna use zero for Z because I'm gonna because obviously all those hands are walking at the same plane. They don't move in the coordinate. So I don't need to change Y and the rotation. I need to update the matrix and I need to set this thing here. Oops, oopsie, oopsie. So I'm, now I'm just creating lots of red squares with the instant smash. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so I have this and now I need to use the, this mesh, this mesh, this geometry, this material, this count, and I need to call it instant mesh, obviously, because that's what I'm trying to do in the first place. Uh, instant mesh. There we go. So we have a geometry, we have a material, we have a count. Then we have, I need to set this mesh set matrix at, uh, I think just Y, then dummy matrix. 
Yeah, because this is the number of the of the object I'm changing the matrix right now. Okay, and then one last thing that I need to do. I actually need to use an instance matrix. I think this might be the hardest part of the stream, just setting up the object. I need to use the instance matrix right here. So I need to multiply the instance matrix. Because this is a matrix I'm actually setting up in a, where? Here. This is a matrix I'm, I'm getting. The only thing that actually in that matrix for now is just the translation of an object. So this matrix will just translate an object in my scene. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. So just randomly positioned right squares. All right, so we have it. We have the basic setup to make lots of those objects. Like we can do them maybe Boom, 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 boom. What else can I do? I can subtract 0 0.5, multiply it by 5, so they are positioned related to the center of the screen, not just to the upper right part of the screen. And I have to do the same with the Y coordinate, obviously. And then I can use hundreds of those. I'm gonna still have a steady 60 FPS. And by hundreds, I mean I could make them smaller. Okay, yeah, I can just use 10,000 of them. And it'd still be good, you know? It's still 60 FPS, I can still watch all those. Okay, so let's get back to the bigger version of this thing. I'm gonna use three. Uh, smaller. So all, all of the three, okay, maybe even bigger than that, like that. It will overlap, but that's all right. So next thing to do, and the most like intriguing part, like how the hell did the guys do, did they use a 3D object with a baked in animation? Did they save this animation as a vertex animation in somehow? Well, the answer is always surprising. I wouldn't even guess if they used these because all those hands they have they had shadow they had it was so it was so looking so cool. I, I believe that they used the three Ds there. Well, now you could tell. I found this peculiar file in the network and sprite. And then open it up, and this is the 3D part. <laughs> Would you believe that? Okay, so I have this file already saved on my desktop. Right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste it to my scene. And let's try to see how we can use this fake, how we can fake 3D animation with the WebGL and the sprites. It's a bit of a mouth, so I was going to make the stream a bit of a and another basic kind of streams of, on using shaders because it's just going to use some coordinates arithmetic inside the shader stuff all right um first i'm going to connect my right i'm going to import and sprite from i don't think it's possible to add gif but it's possible to add video, but kind of tricky, a bit tricky. And PNG. So now I have the URL. Now I can, in my uniforms, I can use a texture called Sprite T. And Sprite. And then inside my fragment shader and by the way I can try to see if I have UVs already here do I yes I do have UVs for each of my plane and I need those UVs to use a texture here so I'm gonna use texture 2d function on sprite and the UV and let's see what it brings us 
nothing because I didn't declare it. There we go, now we have it. Oh, the other thing I need to do, I need to set transparency to true. So the plants are transparent. Yeah, they are now. And now how you can do all this um, dynamic. Like, let's first try to play a bit with the UVs. Video with Jean -Claude Van Damme. Yeah, I can do that too. Actually, I want to try to do that, but I was kind of surprised that you can use a simple sprite and it's so performant. So let's see how you can use sprites here. And then we might do some simple generative art also. Mm, what else? What else? Okay. So now I can introduce some other UVs like. Uh, Back to uv1, let's call it equals vuv. And uh, let's multiply this vuv by 2. What's gonna happen? Well, it's hard to see because it's getting smaller. Like I can multiply it by 5, so the image is gonna get smaller inside the texture. What's gonna happen if I divide it by 5, for example? Nothing's gonna be happening because <laughs> I didn't use my uvs. <laughs> okay, so let's multiply it again. Yeah, they're getting smaller, you see? It's just getting a lot smaller if I multiply the UVs. Because UVs are just numbers between 0 and 1. If I multiply them, it means that the area uh, which relates to this range from 0 to 1 gets smaller. Because the whole area now, now relates to the 0 to 2. And if I divide, it goes the other way. It's bigger. We are zooming into the image, zooming into the left bottom part because UVs are based in the left bottom corner of UV coordinates are based in the left bottom corner. So if I multiply it by five, and you can see that my image is actually five by five hands. So it's twenty-five images of one hand walking. If I multiply it by, I mean, divide it by five, I'll get an image of one hand because it's one fifth. Exactly. So if I zoomed into my image five times, I would get just one part of the image. But how can we move that? Now you can see this image is like that. To move that, we need to add some offset to UVs. And to calculate that offset, we would need, I don't know, some numbers. And what are those numbers? If I just add like plus back two, I don't know, maybe we could even add a uh, float here like one-fifth. You see that, now we see the other image of a walking hand. If I add 0 0.4, it's now the other step. And by adding all those different numbers, it would be getting different sprite positions. And what I essentially do here, so when I have a zero, 0, I have this one. When I add 0 0.2 to both coordinates, I will get this image. When I add 0 0.4, I will get this image. But then I could go here, for example. I would be at 0 0.4, then comma, and then 0 0.2. It's like the coordinate system, and I'm going to each sprite. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you should still watching it. <laughs> okay. And here we go. So we need to calculate those coordinates and get to the correct position of the sprite. If I, if I get it right, this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, fourth one, and so on. So I got this, uh, you could just have it in Photoshop and something for debugging because I'm not even sure where I'm starting in my image for now. I'm gonna do this. It's hard to distinguish between all those images. Maybe that's enough. But to be sure, I need to add all those. Just be with me for a second. 
with my insane Photoshop skills. All right. I can save it as a PNG. Boom, boom, boom. And one. There we go. Change the URL. And I, now I'm seeing 18. I've seen 18 because I'm adding what? Adding what? I'm adding 0 0.4, 0 0.2. And 0 0.4, 0 0.2 is 18. And 18 is where? It's right here. Okay, I just, you know. I messed up with x and y coordinates, but it's, you can see it's just two steps. So two steps up front and three steps to the right. And that's like where you get this coordinate. So to make this shift and to make it shift with time, I think I could add something like, I need to take the mod probably of the, of the value. Mm. So I have this time thing here. And if I try to add time here, I will see the sprite moving. Next thing I want to do, I'm going to add floor of the time. And floor of the time returns me only the integer parts. So I need to divide it by five to get those 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 values because that's the correct sheet. Now we have 16, 17, 18, 19 going on. This is the same thing that you do in JavaScript if you want to play some sprites, but I'm just, I just wanted to do this with the shader stuff. Okay. And then to make it uh, loop, I will need it to take a mod from it, I think. So it's going to be mod floor time. And then mod by five base 16 17 18 19 20 and then back it's not going back <laughs> for whatever reason why so we have this floor time okay let's let's, let's just break it down a bit i'm going to calculate offset which is going to be two dimensional vector and I need to calculate an offset here. All right. Um, boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna use static value for the second value and I need to calculate something here. And then I will add uh, like the UV1, UV1, when we calculate it, it's gonna be equal the Be equal, gonna be equal UV, UV divided by five. The thing that I have plus offset. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, I see where I messed up because this is the integer part. This is now something fractional, and then I'm taking mod from something fractional, which is not the way to go. So probably I would need to do this. I would need to use this and then divide it by five, yeah, here. So I, will, I would get the integer parts here and then divide it by five, okay, let's try that. It's a bit of a mess going on here. It's not the hardest math I had in my streams, so. It's 21, 22, 23, 24, and then it should loop. Yeah, it does loop now. Uh, this is not the correct value though because I'm dividing it by 5 later on so I could use just 1 here. And it should be good now, yeah, 16, 17, yay, we did half of the job. So we did the mod floor part, and then we need to do the other part too, hmm. which is going to be 
probably vice versa. Let's also create the uh, custom time so I don't have to divide it all the time. Float u time equals time divided by four. So I'm gonna use u time here. Not floor u time for the base. And then I need to use something like this floor. I need, I need only the integer part here. Mod floor u time. One of the values should change like with each step, and the second value should change in one of the fifth steps. So it should be the u time divided by five here because it should, this value should grow slower than the other value. So it's going to be mod floor u time divided by five with the base. Uh, no, let's let's make it last words. It's going to be floor from the modular part of the u time divided by five for the base five. So with each when when the u time divided by five will grow out of the next value out of one two and three that's when it's going to change so it's going to be five times slower than the previous value and that's what i need to go into the rows five times slower than you go into the columns it's probably it let's try it it's not it maybe i have an error somewhere i do or not much in the function probably some bracket stuff Lowering. I don't need this one here. So it's 22, 23, maybe I should make it run faster. So now it starts with 21 and it goes the other way. So it starts from the bottom of my image starts from this row then it goes into this row this row I could just subtract 4 here because this value goes from 0 to 4 so if I subtract it from 4 I would get the value that goes in a different direction let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 yeah now it goes into the correct order that's all right and now I could change an image here I could get back to my hand PNG because it goes right. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make time run a bit faster, like five times faster. And we already have the walking hand. The other thing to do, I think the proportions are a bit off here. So what I can do, I can change, I can change, should be a bit higher then the width that's too much maybe that looks good all right so now we have the walking hands let's try to get hundreds of them now like 300 of the walking hands works all right we have to multiply it by five so they get separated on the screen so now we have 300 walking hands in the screen and then this is not the end What do you mean you can change only x position? Yeah, because we add in the two-dimensional vector there, we change both positions, both offsets, like the x and y coordinate of the sprite, so we could get the right position of the UVs. So yeah, now we have a basic understanding of how sprites work, how you can set up your own sprite. A couple of small steps left. Now I need those hands to walk. And to make them walk, I can just, just use the vertex shader. Like free new position equals uh, position, and then position, like new position, plus uh, time, plus time. 
I think if if I just add the same value, it should go. Mm, I should use new position now. Maybe like that, because I only need to change x and y coordinates in the end. It's the other way. Okay. Now we have those hands walking. Uh, what else I could do? I could use a modular here again so they don't go more than two and then they're probably gonna reappear somewhere okay they do but they reappear at the same time doesn't matter yet let's go for the next part next part that is a bit off to me it's changes for a moment that the 3d part is a bit messed up you see some hands are walking on top of the other hands and this is not right and this is a small detail but it just it breaks the whole 3d part now you see that it's just a bunch of sprites on top of each other randomly positioned on the screen and it's not what we want if you, if you go into the into the demo you'll see that it's kind of it's a correct 3d if the hands is walking on top of the other hand it's going to be rendered on top of the other hand but it's not like that in my example yet and the thing about that is the randomness because I'm using the random position of each of the sprites that's why they're being rendered random to change that like the the render order of those is actually the order of of, 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 of the matrices that I'm using for those dummy objects so instead of um, uh, using random coordinates, let's try to only change this one to uh, like i divided by this count. So this value gonna change between zero and one. Then this gonna be between minus one, between minus zero five, plus zero five, and it's gonna be something in the screen. And this value is gonna just zero. Let's see with a zero. Let's see what we get. That's too much of the hands. Now you see each hand is working on top of the next one. I mean, vice versa. Each next hand is on top of the previous one because I'm I'm, I'm rendering them from left to right. Now I could use some uh, randomness but I'd like to use this randomness inside the shader. To use this inside the shader, I need to add an attribute to my shader. I need to have different values for each of the hands here. And I need to, them to be random. Well, to do that, I would need to use an instance pack for geometry. So, I'm gonna introduce new, new geometry instance geometry. It's gonna be called new three instance. How do call instance? And I need to copy this geometry into the instance geometry. Because by default, this instant buffer geometry is just an empty object, it doesn't, which it, it doesn't take anything. I'm gonna head, go ahead and write something from the three JS examples. The geometry. The, this has this API, which I can call, and which copies one geometry into the other. So I'm gonna use this one as a geometry, which I'm gonna be copying to, and this is the from geometry. So this makes my instance geometry the same as this geometry, but with the instance type. And instance type means I mean means I can use it for the instances. So this is the copying part, and because I have now the instance buffer geometry, I can add some attributes to it. So I can introduce some attribute like let set equals um, new float and the number is going to be equal to this count and then I can just inside this same loop I 
to do this I can offset i equals math random and finally I would need to add this as an attribute to my geometry what's the error here clone find defined what instance geometry Hmm. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Okay, I'm gonna just try to. Is it the same? It's the same. This geometry. It's the same. So the errors for now is right here. The only error. Hmm. I think there are even simpler ways I can just set the positions from one geometry for the other, but not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of the problem here. Three buffer geometry prototype call. I think it was uh, I took this line from a three JS example number. Uh, let's just see which examples do we have here now. This one. Three JS has lots of really cool examples which you can learn a lot. So I think they used this tricky line somewhere here. Maybe I messed up with the line. Call. Oh. Hmm, it's not, it wasn't here. Okay, instance I apologize guys I'm just trying to get this idea how you copy the instance, uh, how we copy the default geometry into the instance geometry to preserve the vertices and all this stuff. There we have the, inst the instance mesh. This is a way to add the attribute. I'm gonna add it now. I made me an error, but still. So this instance geometry set attribute offset. And it's one dimensional because I have only one value for each of my hands. And this should work, but I have a row right here. Free buffer geometry prototype copy call. <laughs> Where is this error coming from? Okay, maybe it's because of the this part. Property clone of undefined. Maybe some of them are is undefined. This geometry. Let's try to try to debug it. You know. Let's see what are those values. It's plain geometry. It's instance buffer geometry. Everything is alright. Maybe you have an idea. No, I need buffer geometry because I will need to add some attributes to it. That's why I need the instanced buffer geometry. The 
instanced buffer geometry. That's correct. Instance geometry is the same values for the buffer geometry per step call. Hmm. Okay, we could actually try to copy paste them or just see the attributes. It has the <laughs> position. Vertices, my plane geometry, my plane buffer geometry. Maybe that's the reason. Okay, yeah, that might be the reason actually, because I was copying the plane geometry, but it only works with the plane buffer geometry. Okay, maybe I could change now back to everything as it was before. It's a bit tricky, but you might get this error yourself. Let's try to see if I was right about the reason. Color is not defined. Yeah, it's something else now. Color. It's not the color, it's an offset. Ooh, it's good now. Yeah, so it was because I used the plane geometry, but you should always try to use, whenever possible, plane buffer geometry, because I think plane geometry would be even deprecated soon or something like that. It's better to you always use buffer geometries in all cases, except if you want to show something really simple and want people to type long words. Righty, fix that. So now we have this offset attribute. Now I have to declare it in my vertex shader. It's going to be attribute float offset. And now I can again walk all of them. But I can multiply this by offset. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> instance geometry, because I'm not using instance geometry yet. I'm still using my usual geometry. Now it doesn't work at all. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why would it even work? <laughs> Okay, instance geometry. Maybe I should add the mesh after I add all those attributes. Like the mesh, free instance mesh here. Oh, it gets me an error. Which error is that? Okay, maybe I create mesh here, but add it to the scene later on. Still doesn't work for me, for whatever reason. Why? I want to ask you why. Uncommit copying. Oh, yeah, right. Fuck. What else is wrong there? Instant geometry is not defined. All right, all right, all right, all right. You know, when you make one error, you start to make lots of errors. It's just, you know, they're doing so, such a complicated stuff in 3D with the instance attributes and what I'm and the actual error I make is just forgetting to uncomment something like that. So now we have all those hands working at a different speed and they keep on rotating. And I could add another attribute. Like one attribute could be the speed of the working of the hands, and another attribute could be the what? Could be the offset. Because right now they're starting from the same position. So I could make this one as an offset and another one as a speed. 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 And boom. And I'll make speed. So it's don't get too close to the zero. I'll make it like that. So it goes from 0 0.5 to one. And then I have to declare it here, speed, speed. Maybe I could even minus two plus. So they start working from different position. And then maybe I could add my offset here. I think I should multiply it by four or something. 
Yeah, and the model should be a bit bigger so they can walk deeper into my screen. And there we go, almost. They're still disappearing too close, maybe six or seven. Of course, you should calculate those values depending on your screen size, on your camera fold, and all this stuff. But then what I wanted to see, like the culmination of the stream, is how many of those hands I can, I can have on my screen at the same time. So now some hands are working slowly. You have the 3D correctly now. They're all working in front of each other. So now I can just throw random numbers here, like 300 hands. And yeah, they're working correctly. It's kind of okay in these 3D terms. Because I should calculate better offsets probably, so they get more separated, more, more, more normally separated on the screen, positioned. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to make them 10 times smaller now. Maybe multiply it by 2. I want to see how many hands I can, I can have on my screen at the same time. So now it's small walking hands on my screen. And now I can have a uh, thirty thousands of them. Let's try that. And it's still sixty FPS, you know. Still thirty thousand hands walking on my screen, and it's still like thirty FPS. Uh, to make them fill the whole screen, I think. I think you could use ten here. So it's a full screen filled with walking hands right now. I think I should also multiply this offset by 6 because I'm using 6 as a modeler here. So now I'll have constantly walking hands on my screen. Infinitely walking hands on my screen. And it's still 60 FPS, you know. We could even try to get bigger than that. Let's have 300 thousands of those yeah okay 40 fps now it's kind of a nice effect by the way okay okay we can maybe we can the maximum of my pc can handle is 100 thousand maybe 200 thousand yeah 200 thousand is is about it. It's, it's, it's the point where it gets smaller than 60 FPS. 200,000 walking hands. Could you believe that? It's crazy how GPUs are capable now. Maybe I should multiply it by 10. Now. Uh, it's too big. Fine. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to see how many walking hands I can, my GPU can handle and how good this sprite team works. Yeah, now we have the ZT index fighting because I tried to zoom in into it. But there we go, that's it. Whew. We had some basic errors here, but we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, you're right. To make this happen, I could just use the Orion float speed and I could add here like B speed B speed equals speed and in the fragment shader my U time I could just make it float B speed so now I have this speed value in my fragment shader and I have to multiply the time with this V speed now the hands that are walking slower you can see they are also trying to walk lower than that. Maybe this whole thing is going too fast. So I can <laughs> time divided by nine. So now you can see the hands that are walking faster, they're actually moving faster, and the one that's walking slowly, moving slowly. And it looks like 3D, you know, it's just about the right, right image. And it's just 25 frames of an animation, and it looks so cool, you know. If I saw this kind of animation, I would try to make it a 3D object and something like that, but actually, Sprite works 
does this, such a great job into faking the 3D part. Okay. Uh, in, in, in the original, I think they're even using the native WebGL, so they are not uh, mm, not even using the 3D there. They're using the custom m m m m matrices to show you these. They're using two passes and something like that. But anyway, it's easier for anybody to create it with a 3GS, at least to start creating this with 3GS. And you can do that. You see, it's not much of a code. And then I wanted to do real fast, just small generative thing. I saw recently this one. Just to show you how simple you can start doing something and that it, it actually doesn't matter where you do it in 3D or in 2D. So let's try to do this one. I'm gonna be real fast with this one. I'm trying to stick under one hour for my streams, but it might take us 10 minutes. Could you believe that? I don't. And this might not take 10 minutes. So I have this uh, um, boom, 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 generative. I have the canvas sketch. I advise you to go check out this script, canvas sketch by Matt Deloria. It's a real cool library. It's best suited to draw in something. So if you just want to draw something, you could go and run it. Let's see how it goes. So, generative folder. Then I have this small snippet with the canvas sketch. It just actually runs the file. So I have the file called plane. Let's run it. Now it should be 9966. I wonder what was the reason for this. Not find model sketch yarn at canvas sketch. Let's run it again. Okay, another model that it turns out. Let's see, releasing the course. Well, that depends. Well, hopefully this year. I'd like to make it this year. What would you like this course to be about? Like animations or some other stuff? I don't know. Drawing something in two dimensions. Like what, what would you, if, if I was releasing a course, what would you like to see there? Okay, let's try to run it again. Should be all right this time. Yeah, it's plain and that means it doesn't draw anything. Let's try to see. This is really the whole file I'm running now. Like you could see it on your screen. It's just the setup of the scene, the modules, and then drawing something. I'm not drawing anything, but I'm I can use the context and use something like uh, clear rect zero zero width height and then context kill rect zero zero widths and the height multiplied by playhead so now we have the black square filling the whole screen from top to bottom because I'm changing the height okay shader explanation all right that makes sense uh, yeah so I want to create the grid because you can see this grid of the squares. Let's create the stuff from creating the grid. The grid is going to be the array of something. And then I'm going to, I need to something like the size of each square. So let's call the size uh, 50, 50 pixels. So now I need to calculate how many squares are on, how many rows of the squares do I have to have and how many columns of the squares do I have to have. And this is going to be something like that. Calls equal width divided by size. But because the, the distance between each square is the same, it's, it's double the distance of the size of the square. So it should be size multiplied by two. 
rows going to be the same and both of those should be integers obviously so we have rows we have goals now we, should, we could fill our grid with something so for i uh, less than what rows j less than goals i'll create some dummy object and i'm going to calculate the coordinates for each of them so all x is going to be equal uh, j multiplied by 2 by size this is the coordinate of each square and then y coordinate is going to be the same but with i this makes sense all right and then i could just draw them context style equals white and then grid for each g equals what <laughs> first i need to translate uh, i need to save my context then i need to translate my context into the position of current grid element current cell context translate translate gx g g y and then i should just draw the context begin path context rect zero zero size size should be the square and context stroke i think i should also set the line width of the stroke let's call it three let's see what it gets us uh, so we're beginning the path we're stroking each of the rects and it doesn't see anything because because yeah right um, uh, thank you Antoha. now we see some missing parts i think i could just fill them with something like that just so i see the whole screen then i i, I would like to make it a bit more center wise so for this i'm gonna subtract here the half of the width and here half of the height height and then it's gonna move now yeah but to change that i'm gonna use another translate context restore here context save here and then context translate width divided by two i divided by two so i'm going to translate it to the center of the screen okay it's centered now next next what is next now i need to change them now i think i could just rotate as well as i them moving them i could rotate something here playheads multiplied by math p divided by what four so now we see those squares rotating here now we could also change their size also a small tiny detail to make it center it i need to make this size divided by two is just to shift the square to the center of each cell Alrighty, now they are rotating now i could make them bigger so i'm going to calculate the current size equals size i'm going to replace the size here with the current size and what else current size plus size for example multiplied by playhead so it's going to grow from size to double size let's see 
Yeah, it works all right. So now we could also change the context line width. Set it somewhere here as well. It's gonna be three plus three multiplied by playhead. So it's gonna grow from three to six. Yeah, I should change the duration probably to make it faster. So now, now you see them going pretty well. I would also need to fill them, context fill, not only stroke, but fill. What is this weird stuff going on here with the rect? So now it's going pretty good, context line width. Maybe that's because of the small numbers. Seems like it's going from the zero here. Maybe it should go from five. They should also make it before it gets there. Maybe three value is quite small because I have the whole screen like thousand pixels in width. So this is actually thousand pixels and three is quite small probably. That's why it's yeah, better with a bit thicker border. So now you see that uh, we have an again problem with this Z index and how you can fix that, the order of draw. I could fix it with just reordering my grid and how to fix my grid. So I need to sort my grid depending on the distance from the center. And the distance from the center is just the square root of something. So grid sort and then a b and then depending on which value i return here like negative or positive it should sort my whole array and to sort it correctly i need to sort it depending on distance from the center and distance from the center right now is going to be this it's going to be uh, x to the power of two plus uh, y to the power of two minus bx power of 2 minus b y power of 2. That's because I already centered my coordinate system and all the values, I have negative values, I have the positive values and I have the center of my coordinate system right here. 0, 0 is going in the center of my screen. Because of that I can just calculate the square root. Well, I, I, could, I, could, I could also calculate the square root here, but I don't need it. I just need to compare those values, which one is bigger, which one is smaller. Let's see what we get with this one. I think it should be the other way. I would also make the growing part bigger. Like three times bigger. So we can see the effect. Now we see that this center, the center square is actually closer to the viewer so it renders the last in my my whole grid function now the only tiny detail is left to do to make this animation look good i need to use easing is in out cubic mm. yeah from here is it not cubic um, is in out Give it this one. I'm gonna take this function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll add speed in a second. So I don't need all the squares animated at the same time. And you can see in the original GIF video, the animating from the center and it goes with this nice, nice, real nice uh, wave coming from the center. And that's what I'm trying to do. So, except that I calculated here the. Uh, x and y coordinates i would like to calculate also something like offset and this offset is gonna be what it's gonna be o x 2 plus so depending on the distance i want this wave go from the center and i'm gonna have the op offset value zero at the center and the maximum offset value at the like at the border of my screen and o y to the power of two and this whole thing square root and then divide it by the maximum distance that I get here and the maximum distance is gonna be 
what? It's going to be also square root. It's going to be width divided by 2 to the power of 2 because this is the coordinate of the, of the corner of my screen. Plus the same for the height. So this value probably should go from 0 to 1. Like this divided by this. This is the maximum distance and this is the current distance of my grid cell. And this is actually the same value that I'm, I'm sorting objects on. Like maybe I could have used this offset to sort it all as well. But it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So I have this offset. Boom, boom, boom. What else? What else? What else? What else? We're almost there. I also copied the the cubic easing function. Let's see how the how it works here. So function something like that. Is it not cubic? Which is just returning. Yeah, it's right. Did I make it right? Yeah, it works. And now, and now, I could just do this like playhead equals is not cubic on the playhead. Yeah, so now it's it has a, a different physics of the animation. I think I should also make my borders a lot thicker in the end. Like when I when I change the thickness, where line width stands, let's make it better. Yeah, we're getting there. Maybe even thicker than that. Yeah. So now they're animating at the same time, and last thing left is to animate them not at the same time. So let's. Uh, like the speed of animation of each cell is actually the playhead. So I need to replace this playhead with something else for each of the cell. So I'm going to calculate something like current progress P equals playhead for now. I'm going to replace all the playhead parts here. So for now it's going to be the same. And now I need to calculate different playheads for each of my animation. And this is like the most fascinating part for me, probably. Because I'm gonna use clamp function, I already have it. Clamp function just clamps number to the zero and one range or any other range you would like to use. And I will do, I used this function a bunch of times before. I'll try to guess how it will now look. So it's gonna be clamp gonna be uh, clamp to zero one range and I'm gonna be clamping this uh, playhead minus uh, mm, it usually goes like that G offset divided by if I used 0 0.3 here it's gonna be divided by 0 0.7 here and let's see. Yeah, it actually works all right. So now I could just play with those numbers a bit to make the physics. That's not what I'm going for. Maybe the other way. Yeah, I think it's, that's it. You could play with those numbers a bit more. You know, the main point I, I was trying to do here is that it's actually like how many lines of code did we? right now it's like still at 78 like i wrote this function this loop and i wrote this grid function and that's it it's like 50 lines of code and imagine that it's actually something beautiful that you can enjoy in 50 lines of code and i, I don't know it took 10 minutes for me because I, I obviously knew knew how to do this whole part but still it's so simple to do something you know beautiful something you can enjoy something you can show somebody something that could inspire someone to do that by yourself. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. Now we have this beautiful wave of those squares. Maybe I could make it even faster. 
And we can make it, of course, go backwards. It's not a problem at all. It's going to be like your homework. And we have this beautiful button. Something going back and forth. Well, that's what I wanted to show you in today's stream. I hope you like that. I'm always glad to hear any kind of comments, even not the best ones. Like, why am I speaking English? Because my <laughs> with the people who is in chat, I, most of them are Russian. But I'm not here for развитие. I'm here for fun. I'm here for sharing knowledge. Well, if you like it, I'll be glad. All right. So, cheers, everyone. Thank you for being with me this morning. Thank you for fixing my mistakes. Thank you for everyone. Have a good day. See you. Live your beautiful life.